With Creo 10, we now offer composite design and manufacturing capabilities. You can access the new composite environment by creating a composite feature from the engineering group. You start by going through the setup procedure to define the material, layup surface, and rosette. You can select available sample materials for plies and cores. And in this example, we're selecting a quilt to define the layup surface and select the stacking direction. The only thing left now is to define the rosette reference coordinate system to start creating plies. Let's start by creating a ply based on a simple closed loop curve on the layup surface. As you see, it creates a new ply object in the new laminate list. When creating a core, same as a ply, we can add multiple inner loops. So let's add this inner loop to the core. When flattening during the draping simulation, later on in the demonstration, you'll see that both outer and inner loops will get flattened. The core definition can also hold a taper value. So let's add the taper for both loops. Before we create some sections, let's add one more ply, and this time pick multiple curves on the layup surface. The system understands that they intersect and find a closed loop, suggesting you several options to create the new ply area. Now let's change the material for this ply definition and add the second ply to this list. And as you can see, the color coding of these plies change due to a different combination of material and orientation angle, which you can change at any point in the color mapping tool. Let's now add a few plies to the outer edge of this engine cover. Switching to the laminate manager view, showing the property columns behind the plies also allows you to interact with them. So you can change directly from the table without having to redefine any ply features. So let's create a couple of sections as you're used to in Creo. The main difference here is actually that besides showing the color coded ply sections, we allow you to change the scale of the plies, the ply thickness in the stacking direction. And as you can see, scrolling the section through the model, it dynamically updates. As you can see, we've been making all these plies in insert mode. We can actually resume pre-created plies like that. Let's now look at how to reorder the ply sequence order by changing the order of the ply features and see the section update dynamically. With the transition plies feature, you can change the contour of selected plies and have their contour step in gradually, avoiding a sharp drop as you see with these four plies. The common boundary of the selected plies is highlighted in yellow, allowing you to select one or multiple pieces of this boundary. 
we have two profile settings or you can switch to a custom transition type for this example let's switch that single edge to the full contour and offset with a step of 20. as you can see in this section the plies are now dropping over each other we can control that drop off for the full section but also for each individual ply in the design we can add the drop off parameter as a column in the laminate manager and change it from default to any value you desire as you can see the result in the section let's now make this layup a bit more symmetrical find the laminate feature that belongs to the selected ply select the needed ply features and copy them to add them to the list let's add one last ply to close them all in and then easily rename the sequence order as well as the whole ply list by multiple selecting the plies we can use the object properties dialog to easily change these properties Let's now define a splice splice feature by selecting this last full ply, the curve on surface to splice it, and add an overlap for the two pieces. And as you can now see in the laminate list, the original ply is now the header of a group and the two new pieces are inside that group, inheriting the properties of the original ply. And if we select multiple plies, the splicing feature allows you to add a stagger as well as an overlap. With the remove ply feature, you can actually remove any ply or core object without suppressing, removing or redefining any of the features in the model tree. Let's now have a look at the draping simulation of the first full ply in the list. You can change the seat point by picking a different location on the surface but you can also lock it to an existing datum point. And when we accept the feature, it actually shows an icon representing the result in the draping manager. Let's now add the remaining plies and core to the draping simulation feature. As you can see in the user interface, the first ply is showing no pause symbol as it has already been calculated. Picking the core will automatically give you the preview, also showing you that the inner loop is being flattened automatically together with the outer loop, showing you the preview on screen. The draping results can also be viewed directly from the draping manager, selecting the appropriate button from the mini toolbar.
some of these flies have an additional red glyph next to their name, indicating that the flat pattern is actually larger than the indicated roll width, suggesting that you might have to splice these plies. And as you can see in this view, this ply is clearly bumping over the existing core and the neighboring spliced other piece of ply. This is represented because we've selected by default the over underlying plies draping option. When you turn this draping option off, the ply no longer understands its context and will assume it's the only ply in the stack up. With the option on by default, the result is clearly more accurate. With the draping results available for all the plies in the stack up, we can export their flat patterns to DXF or DWG. And from this dialog, you have multiple options on how to write a single or multiple files to disk. We also allow you to export the model to the two analysis formats, a .NAS, Nastron file, and a .HDF5, which actually also allows you to include the results from the draping simulation. At any moment during the design, you can close the composite environment, exit the feature, and go into Creo Simulate to run a composite analysis based on the stack up. In the background, all the ply properties and information is shared with Creo Simulate, allowing you to very quickly and easily run a composite analysis based on your design. Let's now run such analysis in Creo Simulate, look at the displacement results, go back into the composite feature to suppress the core, and run the same analysis again to very easily and quickly see the impact of such a change. Let's now add some columns to the Laminate Manager, showing some of the mass property parameters of these plies. For the mass property calculations, similar to the draping simulation, you have two options. You can either calculate it more accurately using the underlying plies option, or go for the simple only layup surface calculation. We can calculate the mass properties for an individual ply, as well as for the full stack up. And of course, the same options are also available under the mass property dialog in the analysis tab. Let's now write the laminate manager with all the columns to a CSV, so we can later show this in the plybook drawing. Let's now hide all the ply definitions from the laminate list and create a solidified plies feature to create a solid representation of the full laminate. This feature allows you to optionally create an IML quilt together with the solid. If we now leave the composite environment, we see that the solid, and in this case the IML, is a deliverable of the composite feature to the part. And as this is normal Creo geometry, you can perform operations, or cut a hole like this example. The final piece in this demonstration is to show the automatic creation 
of a template-based playbook drawing. As you can see, in only a few seconds, the system creates the playbook drawing based on the template, creating a sheet per ply, populating all the views, parameters, and table, as in this example. And as final step, we can add a table reading the CSV file from the Laminate Manager, showing the full Laminate List overview in a drawing sheet. This brings us to the end of this Creo Composite Design and Manufacturing demonstration.